This is our, uh, our noontime Q&A and support. Do a little housekeeping here and then we'll get, we'll get started. My name's Travis Martin. Got new members joining every day, so uh, we want to introduce ourselves for those that don't know me. Uh, my name's Travis. I've lost over 100 pounds on the program. I've come off all prescription medications. I've been maintaining and it's been the honor and blessing of a lifetime to, uh, to, to teach. Nutrition, health, and wellness. I can still, 20 years later, I can't believe that I stumbled into this calling. And um, just want to thank God for all the connections I've made through the years, all the amazing transformations and miracles that, that I've seen and been witness to. You all are amazing. And if you're a new person, you're, you're new, you're in our new free community member program. Uh, we love you. We're so glad that you're here. We want to be a help to you. We want you to be able to stop that diet mentality. Put it behind you. Cast it as far from you as the east is from the west. And forgive yourself, love yourself. And let's move forward with more wisdom. And uh, we can do it. We can do it. We're all here to help. We're just friends helping friends. And we're going to do this in the name of Jesus. Obesity is the leading cause of all premature death in our country. And together we can fix this and we can overcome with love. That's what it takes. Sometimes tough love, but nevertheless love. So we're glad that you're here. If you're a free community member, uh, I have to say, uh, we owe our lifetime members and our partners uh, an amazing amount of gratitude for being able to provide this program. If it were just me, I would be able to help very, very few people because there would just be me. I wouldn't be able to afford Zoom. I wouldn't be able to afford a website. I wouldn't be able to afford an app. I wouldn't be able to afford the amazing mentors that we have that help people every single day. I wouldn't be able to do that. So I wanna thank, before we get started, I want to thank our lifetime members for letting God use you Thank our partners for letting God use you to help me help people. Thank you so much. God bless all of you that are here today that are lifetime members and partners. I love you so much. Uh, but with that, uh, without further ado, we'll get started. This is our Q&A class, question and answer session, support session. I can't be live 24-7 if I'm not live and you need help. We have a great mentor program where you can get free mentorship one-on-one -on -one if needed. Uh, and we're always available via email at info at myshaboth.com. I go live twice a day right now, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. to answer questions live and help people personalize their approach with Shibola. So let's get this started. Uh, right out of the gate, hello, Annette. Annette has asked a great question. Is pinto beans and approved cornbread perfect pairings? Uh, actually, that's an approved food combination. So let me show you how I derive that. Let me get our great website up here. All right, should be able to see my screen now. And I'm gonna go pull up our food combination list. Uh, I'm gonna go into the video library. That's the best place to find it quickly. Advanced food combination chart. So what category everyone, let's use this as a teaching, some teaching time, learning time. What category are pinto beans everyone? Category six. So now I've got to go look up that recipe and see what category it is. So I'm going into resources. I'm going into recipes. She named a recipe. Perfect cornbread. And I'm pulling it up. And it says... 
this is a category two plus four, okay? This is a category two plus four, this particular cornbread. So we won't find where we can have a six plus a two plus a four together, okay? So this would be one of those things where you would send in via email and ask if you can have it, or you would find a category two cornbread that you could have, because you can have a six plus a two, but you're asking specifically about this particular recipe, I think, unless that was just in my mind. Is Pinto's an approved cornbread? Oh, well, you just said any approved cornbread. Well, this particular recipe would not be a, a right combination, but thankfully, you can have this one as a perfect pairing because it's high enough in protein and fiber and pentos are low enough on the glycemic index that it would be allowed. But if I was just trying to find, I guess I had that one hung up in my head. Sorry about that. Sorry, Annette. I could look through here and see if I could find one that's a category two and then it would work even better because it wouldn't have to be a perfect pairing. One slice of cornbread alone as a category two. Do you see that, Annette? This particular recipe would be better with your pintos because I wouldn't have to do any funny business as a perfect pairing because this one, this one is a category two. Does that make sense, Annette? Perfect. Go answer some other questions. Hello again. Hello. Can you have egg whites and spinach with one cup of health-wise chocolate? How would you count that? Well, I would prefer you not, um, but let's unpack that, Annette. Another complex one to think through. So our new folks, please don't be intimidated. Annette, is she's uh, taking a deep dive into this stuff. What category are egg whites, everyone? They're a one if they're prepared right. Spinach is a category two, one plus two. Healthwise hot chocolate is a meal replacement or a snack episode. So there's many ways to count that because it's nothing but protein. I would suggest that you have healthwise hot chocolate as a meal replacement or a snack for weight loss and you have your egg whites and spinach without it, maybe just a cup of coffee or something. But if you wanted to have all of that in one eating episode and you can control your overall calories, you're having a one plus two. Health-wise hot chocolate is just protein. So egg whites is just protein. So you're having two category ones with your spinach. As long as you keep that under 300 calories, I don't think you're gonna have a problem with that, Annette. I would write that down on your personal meal idea list and go to it often. No, there's nothing in anything that you just mentioned that is gonna cause weight gain unless you cook your egg whites and spinach in an unapproved fat. Uh, this is not where you find the We Fixed It, Denise. Let me show you where that is. I'll give you the link. We really leave no stone unturned. There are 6,000 members in this group. I had no idea till I just went to it. And I'm going to post the Facebook link for We Fixed It. We Fixed It is when our members, there's that group, Denise. Let me know if that answers your question. This is for members only, and it's when our members ask for a recipe modification or a food approval. This is where you get your answer. You have to give us some time. We're, we're a small team, and Kim Chabot does a great job with this.
We have a Facebook question. Uh, Tressa, if, if I pick two protein bars that are meal replacements, one is 190 calories and six net carbs, 19 grams of protein, can I eat them together? Please don't do that. Yeah. So 400 calories, Tressa, for a processed food bar is really too much for good weight loss. You need to have one of those. And I want you to think it through. When you consume a 200 calorie bar, I know because I do often, when you consume a 200 calorie bar as a meal or a snack that's an approved one, you're satisfied. You may not be full. If you eat two of those bars, I suspect you're full because I'm full when I eat two of those stuffed. I don't want to see anyone do that. Uh, we want the least number of calories during the weight loss mode, the least number of calories that we can consume with the highest nutrient value. You're consuming a bar with high nutrient value, 19 grams of protein. It's low calorie. I'd have that, and I'd wait four to six hours and then have another one if you wanted it, but I wouldn't put two together. Hope that helps. I'm not saying that you, you can't make that work, but that's going to cause you to hit a plateau prematurely prematurely if you do that too often with two because they're processed. I think where you may be getting that, that number that you come up with, you've heard me say that we want our eating episodes, our meal episodes, ideally, we can't do this all the time depending on the foods that we combine, ideally under 400 calories. For a, for a meal episode. But when we're talking about shakes and bars, we got to bring that number down because we're not talking about whole food now. We're talking about processed food. And processed food is easier to digest than non-processed food. The easier it is to digest, the less beneficial it is to our overall metabolism. Same thing for your shake, Tressa. Shake. Tressa is asking now, what about a shake? Can maybe I double portion up on a shake? I don't like to see that because it's pre-digested and processed. Pre-digested foods and processed foods, we have to dial down the portion. Does that make sense, Tressa? You can't max out. Um, don't don't max out on processed food. Keep keep it in the sweet spot. That that sweet spot for processed foods, 250 to 300 calories for a meal episode. When we're talking whole food, we still want you to stay 300 to 350, but it's more easy to go to four or 500 calories because we're eating whole foods and all of the calories in whole foods aren't usable calories as usable. Tamara, freebies, can I eat as much freebies in one meal? For example, a, a whole bag of rice cauliflower is 100 calories, then add chicken, but it is more than a six inch plate. So certainly a freebie is a freebie. However, it's not just about the nutritional profile, it's about our lifestyle. It is never good. This is a child's stomach in its natural state. That's how much food should fit in that child's stomach. This is an adult sized stomach. Take the valves out. Okay. Anytime we eat more than the capacity here, we're expanding this and stretching it, causing us to not be as satisf satisfied as quickly. So even when it comes to whole foods, just because we can eat more doesn't mean we want to. So let's say in this situation, you're eating, you're having rice cauliflower and you're having chicken, okay? And you know, I may be misunderstanding. Uh, yeah, I am misunderstanding. Because you're asking for uh, 
you're saying that where are you coming up with the hundred calorie thing? I believe it's Tamara. I can just see three dots. Tamara, I believe it's Tamara. Yeah, Tamara. Tamara Underwood. Hey, Tamara. So where are you coming up with the hundred calories? I see what you're saying now. You're ha using a hundred calories, and it's more than your portion rule. You don't have to use that much. I, I would stick with the, even though you're having extra rice cauliflower, it's not going to hurt you other than you're stretching your stomach. And we want our stomach to go back in its natural state. Ha, has anybody fasted? You've fasted for, for quite some time, 24 hours. And then the next day you can't hold as much food. That's how quick your stomach can reshape itself and start, uh, start normalizing. We want that phenomenon to occur. We want our stomach to show we've stretched and stretched and stretched. So even if you're eating whole foods that are good for you, if you eat too much, even if they don't cause fat gain, you're stretching the stomach. And your capacity to hold more and more even bad food is now elevated. We want to normalize our stomach size. So let's stick with, as you can, Let's stick with a proper portion of chicken and rice cauliflower, even though you could have more, let's have less and see if you're satisfied. Thank you, Connie. Lisa, is it better to buy egg beaters or white egg beaters or can you just mix your own whole eggs or egg whites? It's better to, to just have, uh, separate the egg, the egg white and the egg yolk. Uh, egg beaters are fine. You can have the, the artificial colored ones. You can have the white ones. Doesn't matter. But the more processed it is, the less beneficial it is to us. So taking organic eggs, separating the yolk and the white of the egg, that's fine too. An egg white is an egg white. You are picking up some artificial food colorings uh, that they don't, they don't allow for any major metabolic impact. But they're, they're not great. I always look at it like, and I eat them too. I eat egg beaters. Um, they don't taste as good to me as like Egg Whites International or something that's just a better quality product. But they're fine from a nutritional profile. It's just protein. But I always look at it like, you know, what are my drathers? Okay, if I'm getting in the shower, would I rather – uh, if I had to wash my skin, ooh, this is gross, but if I had to wash my skin with egg whites, would I rather it be an organic egg white or an egg beater? Because <laughs> I'm washing my internal organs with that stuff. So just something to consider. But they're both fine. What would you do with the egg yolk then? I would feed it to my dog. Uh, I eat the yolk. Uh, I think an egg without the yolk is not nearly as, as nutrient dense. I rarely will eat egg whites unless I'm using egg whites as the base for my shake. I, or I won't eat egg whites unless I'm desiring grits or oatmeal. Now, I can't have a whole egg with grits. I can't have a whole egg with oatmeal. And I may be wanting grits or oatmeal. In that case, I have to have egg whites. But for myself, if I'm wanting eggs, I'm eating the yolk because it's so, so beneficial. So many nutrients, so many amino acids that I can't get from that egg white. But I can't have my grits and oatmeal. So I'll have whole eggs with a slice of approved toast. Or I'll have whole eggs in a La Tortilla factory tortilla, a four plus a two. I'll have whole eggs with some shredded fat-free cheese. So it's just, here's what I love about Shibola for people that will immerse themselves in it. What is my goal? What is my situation? What tastes good? What am I craving? How do I put that together and have the success I want to have? That's how I see it. Any other questions? It's not that a yolk's bad for you. It's bad for you if you eat it. If you're, it's bad for you if your goal is to lose weight and you don't want to gain fat and you're eating a yolk 
with something like grits. That's bad. That's when, if I want the grits worse than I want the whole eggs and I'm having egg whites and grits. Couple of questions on Facebook. Joy asks, so would a whole egg with turkey bacon and a piece of approved toast be considered a perfect pairing? So I'm having a whole egg, it's category four, approved turkey bacon, not all turkey bacon, approved turkey bacon is a category four and approved toast is a category two. So Joy, let me know if you're understanding because I know you're new at this. That's a four plus two. Can you have a four plus two? I'm going to wait for your answer on that. Miranda, can you do hash browns and egg whites? You could if you add a category two. So, Miranda, if I have scrambled egg whites and Pam cooking spray or MCT oil on this side of the plate, and I have a quarter cup of hash browns on this side of the plate, quarter cup of cooked hash browns, Pam cooking spray or MCT oil, and then I have a, a slice of category two toast, that's allowed. You have to have, if you want the hash browns, what category are, is it hash browns? They're category three. So I have to look at my combination chart and have a one plus two plus three on a portion plate. Let You two that ask these great questions, let me know if I've answered adequately and you understand. These pivots and these nuances that somebody that's not in the know, they'll tell you it's a calorie thing. They, they don't know what they're talking about. If it was all about calories in, calories out, then 500 calories of ice cream would break down the same way 500 calories of chicken breast and broccoli does. It doesn't. All calories are not created equal. You must understand these pivots. You can't have hash browns ever cooked in unapproved fat. You can have them in the MCT unless it's a holiday. You prepare them the right way, have a quarter cup, with your egg white and spinach omelet, you're good to go. So if I have egg, uh, spinach, egg white spinach omelet cooked in Pam on one side of my plate, then I can have on the other side of the plate a quarter cup of cooked hash browns with approved ketchup. Perfect. Joy, you're right. That would what you asked for was a four plus a two. So as long now, as long as you can joy portion control it with your six inch plate, six to eight inch plate, you're going to experience great results. Any other questions? You're welcome. <clears throat> also, those of you that are, are learning, very important that you have you take pictures with your smartphone, take pictures of your meal portions. So if you hit a plateau and you're confused, myself or a mentor can look at those photos and see what your portions look like and ask appropriate questions. Anyone else? I'd love to answer some more questions if you have any. Tressa, did you see my question about amino acids? Uh, Tammy Cornette just asked on behalf of you. Tressa asked, how does she know if she needs to take an amino acid? You should not need to take amino acids if you're eating uh, meat. If you are not a meat eater, then if you're a vegan, 
you need to purchase you some essential amino acid supplements because plants do not have all of the essential amino acids, which can cause you to lose additional muscle during times of calorie deficit. The only time you need to supplement with amino acids is if you're extremely active. Uh, you will need that to prevent the breakdown of muscular tissue if you are working out and exercising diligently while in a calorie deficit. In that case, I take AdvoCare Catalyst before and sometimes even after my workouts. Uh, but I work out a lot and hard. I did not work out to lose my weight. I want to clarify that because that scares people off. I lost more than 100 pounds without a single type of exercise, just food. Now I exercise because I wanted a complete body transformation. Um, but no, if you're eating meat and not exercising, you do not need to supplement with amino acids. Animal products, animal foods have all essential and non-essential amino acids. Does that help everyone? Is that new information for anyone? Connie. Connie says, I sent Sasha. I love the way you spell her name, Shasha. <laughs> I, it sounds like that when I say her name sometimes, Shasha. Sasha, uh, I sent Sasha an email list, an email last week relating to being a sponsor. I'll check and make sure she's seen it. I think Sasha is listening here today on Facebook. So, Sasha, it, now that we're off the road, we were on the road basically two and a half days traveling. Uh, thank y'all for your patience. And we are a small team. So I'm sure she'll check that. Thank you, Connie. Thank you so much. Andy. Yes to exercise down 55 pounds. Awesome. Good job. Outstanding. Tressa is a carnivore. Me too. And I highly recommend carnivorism. <laughs> Tammy's after me about my happy juice soon. As soon as I get my blood work, then I'll start talking about it. <laughs> Assuming my blood work comes back good. I'm worried a little bit about the highly addictive potential of it. But I think, I think the uh, pros outweigh the cons for people who are – significantly overweight but i want to see my blood work my liver enzymes and then i'll i'll let y'all in on the happy juice secret <laughs> or not <laughs> joan hey joan is it okay to have light and fit yogurt for a snack early in the morning and then about 11 have your breakfast the yogurt is 80 calories eight carbs 12 protein okay so that is approved Breakfast would be Canadian bacon and two whole eggs. So let me unpack that again. Is it okay for me to have this yogurt as a snack? Yes. That would be an eating episode, though. You can have up to three meal episodes a day and a snack episode a day. It is always best, though, to have three only. <laughs> so two meals and one snack would be fine if you wanted to do that. But yes, you could have your snack episode first thing in the morning, and then let that dictate the rest of your day. Joan, let me know if, if I answered your question. Sometimes I misunderstand in these chat format forums where uh, it's almost where we're trying to condense the number of words. I just want to make sure I understood your question. So, yes, you could start your day off with an approved snack episode. Connie says, be encouraged, everybody. She's down 31 pounds since the beginning. Congratulations. That's a lot of body fat, life-changing stuff there. Great job. Great, Joan. Good. That did answer Joan's question. Uh, is there a question about breaking? I see somebody asking about breaking plateaus. I may have missed a question. I'm not sure that's Miranda's question, actually. I second the question about breaking the plateau. 
Um, did I miss something? Are y'all wanting to know how to break a plateau? Or did I miss some other question that that's related to? I'm missing some stuff somewhere. Tressa, um, your last question was about amino acids, but then I'm seeing a question, should my portion be one, in, one to one and a half cups? What are we talking about? I'm not sure what we're talking about. If y'all can unpack that better for me, that would be helpful to me. Uh, the best way to break a plateau, there are many ways to break a plateau. There are many ways to break a plateau, but I'm going to give you the best, safest, and most fail-safe way, okay? So this should be in everybody's bag of tricks. The best way to break a plateau is the following. Drink your water. Journal in more detail. Revisit your why. Revisit your who. Who are you in Jesus? Who do you want to be? You've hit a plateau. You're off track. Do you want to be a positive person, a patient person, a happy person, a joyful person? Be that. Okay? Don't be negative. Water, journal food combinations, but specifically red column, red column meal episodes only, or minus one, not, I'm sorry, minus two or minus three meal replacements, up to Three a day on a portion plate. Now it's getting messy. <laughs> a 16 hour fast every day. Fifteen thousand plus steps a day. That will break any plateau. If anybody says that that doesn't break their plateau, they're not doing it right. It's impossible for that strategy to not break a plateau. Wow challenges usually will break a plateau and they're fun, but that protocol that I just gave you will break any plateau if done correctly. The only time that that protocol will not break a plateau is if someone's expectations are off the chart you're wanting to lose multiple pounds every day to be satisfied, that doesn't happen. Or you're really, really close to goal and you can only at best lose a pound or two of fat a week. Um, but you have to be really like where I'm at, really extremely low body fat. And, you know, for me, the best I can do if, if I follow that protocol is lose a pound or two a week. But I don't have anything left to lose. But anyone that follows that protocol exactly is going to break through any plateau and easily lose two to five pounds a week. Does that make sense, everybody? Next. Truss is asking about her spaghetti squash. Uh, I didn't see it, so I'm going to try to scroll backwards. Yeah, I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. If you could copy and paste it again, that will help. Trust, I, I just don't see it. The, 
did, does everybody understand the protocol to break a plateau? Yeah, Tammy's saying it's not just you, Travis. Facebook messages are not showing up in mine either when they are posted. Yep. Yeah, Facebook, so it does some weird stuff. Thank you, Joni. Does apple cider vinegar help with weight loss or is it mainly for gut health, Miranda asked. Um, it's not mandatory for weight loss. It's best for insulin control. It's good for insulin control and gut health. Yes to the gut health, but it also helps us control insulin, especially before a holiday meal or a meal containing category three or five. Better than apple cider vinegar would be Advocare Carbis Plus to control insulin, but that's predominantly what apple cider vinegar does. Good, good gut health, better gut health, and insulin control. Sasha, spaghetti squash is a category two and deer meat is a one. So if I had a, a one plus two trussa on a portion plate, I'm going to be fine. Spaghetti squash is a two. Uh, venison with no fat added is a one. If it has fat added by the processor, venison's a four. So either way, you got a winner as long as you control your overall portion. And yes, generally speaking, a cup to a cup and a half fits on a portion control plate. One cup of food combined right is really all we should be putting in this stomach pouch or the right combination on a portion control plate. I eat off a portion control plate because that works. This is my stomach. This is not my stomach. This is my stomach. I'm done when it says I'm done. Not when this stomach down here says I'm done. Now, that can be difficult. Thank you, Patty Bass. I got stars. I got to do the Elvis. I got stars. <laughs> I'm going to have to tape them too. Thank you, Patty. Thank you so much. Yeah, portion control, it might seem difficult in the beginning, but as your stomach normalizes in size, it's going to be much less difficult to control your portions. It's like any change in life. It's the beginning that can be a little bit of a struggle. But once we adjust, that's just what the way life becomes. And in fact, I've been doing what I've been doing so long, it's hard for me to think about food any other way than the way I think about it now. You just have to stick to it. stick to is required. Truss is asking, should I portion deer meat and spaghetti squash together or separately? I think I'm still confused about the question because in my mind, your question is, can I have deer meat with spaghetti squash? So deer meat is a category one, spaghetti squash is a category two. Now, if you wanted to separate them, you can have a category one by itself or a category four by itself. And you can have a category two by itself. So it depends on the specificness of your question, but I'm assuming you're eating them together. Some things you cannot eat by themselves. You can eat a category one and a category two by themselves. Any other questions? Okay. 
Our hearts and minds are clear. Now, Tressa, your your comment, I don't I still don't see a question, so I feel like that I'm I may be concluding wrong. You now your comment says deer meat sauce. Um I don't know what that sauce is. If you'd like to post it here, I can look at it and let you know if it's approved or not. But I, I'm not sure what deer meat sauce would be. Sounds like you're trying to have like a spaghetti recipe. So that would be easy for us to look at with you in the We Fixed It group or here while I'm live if you'll post it. But I would need to know specifics. Um, er everything counts. Everything counts. Everything matters in a recipe. We have thousands of recipes online, and we, we will add thousands more over the next few years. So happy to look at a new recipe for you. I just don't know what deer meat sauce is. If you're using deer, a tomato base, some seasoning, if that's what we're talking about, that's going to be fine all together on one portion plate. That would be like my spaghetti. I have spaghetti squash, my meat sauce recipe, 96% lean ground meat. I have spaghetti that way, but I eat it off a portion plate all mixed together. Anyone else? Any other questions? If all hearts and minds are clear, we'll go try to work on some other things for our members. We're still working hard on relaunching our website for our, for our partners and lifetime members and free community members. So we can go work on that when y'all are done with me. Tammy says, it is sure good to have you and Sasha back and safe. Missed y'all too. It's good to be back. Life is precious. We were reminded of that again over the weekend as we attended a funeral of a, of a, of a family member. And uh, life comes with an expiration date and make the most of every single day. How do we do that? Love. Living for Jesus is about love. It's about self-love, love of one another. That's how we love God. Thank you, Janice. Trusta says it's, it is a lean ground deer, perfect. Low sugar tomato sauce, perfect. Spaghetti squash, perfect. But do I measure it two portions of spaghetti squash and one portion of sauce? You, you, that, all of your ingredients are approved. There's no ingredient there that's going to be hurtful to your campaign to lose weight. So I don't mix my noodles. I'm weird. I mix them when I put them on the plate, on a portion control plate. So I put my noodles, my approved noodles on my plate. Then I dip my meat sauce and put it on there. If both of my hands cover it, that's a great portion. If you need a specific amount, I would suggest a cup up to a cup and a half of all of it mixed together. If you're asking me to be more specific, I would suggest a uh, three quarters of a cup of spaghetti squash and three quarters cup of your meat sauce. Tammy says, if you get a chance, read Tressa Wright Nelson's testimony on Facebook. She is doing great mind and body and Tressa made Tammy tear up. I can't wait to go check that out, Tressa. Great job. She's doing good because she's interactive during class, y'all. 
She wants to learn and wants to know this stuff. She's open-minded, open-hearted. What a blessing that is in this day and time. Not to offend anybody, but we're living amongst a bunch of know-it-alls <laughs> that you can't tell anything. And trust is so open and she's learning and she's applying. It's one thing to know, another thing to do what you know. Good job, Tressa. Thanks for sharing, Tammy. Tammy's like a sister. She's like me. She she uh, experiences success when other people do. And that's me. I feel like their success is my success. It just does my heart good uh, to see people doing good. Joan says, we should have stopped in Valdosta yesterday. We should have thought about that, had a good meal together or something. <laughs> Maybe next time. It'll take a little time, Tressa uh, says, I get confused with categories. So did I in the beginning, and I founded the program. You know, I just, I just became diligent that I'm not going to put anything in my temple ever again if I don't know how it breaks down, unless it's a holiday. So you're doing the same thing. You want to know, and over time, that's gonna, your, your bag of tricks, your bag of weight loss tricks and meal ideas is going to grow and grow and grow because every time you learn a new one, that's one more to add to your shepherd's pout. Okay, y'all, it's been great to be with you again. Uh, Lord willing, we will be with you again tomorrow at 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. And uh, then tomorrow night, if you're in the master class, we'll be with you tomorrow night at 8 p.m. for the master class. Uh, we're gonna have a class on the thermic effect of food. If you're not in the master class, you should not come to that class. I just wanted to update my master class, folks. And uh, if you want to get in a master class, we, we try to do one every month. So we've got a new month coming up. And when this one's over, we'll start another one if we have enough interest. All right, y'all. God bless you. We'll see you at the next one. Y'all have a beautiful day, a perfect day in the Lord. And remember, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how many uh, unsavory situations, if you'll get off to yourself and center yourself, I know God will show you where there's more for you than is against you. God loves you. God's for you who can be against you. I'll see y'all at the next one.